half of all refugees and asylum seekers are children. That is millions and millions of children on the move. Millions and millions of children living in temporary communal accommodation. Tents, hostels, mobile home sites, army barracks, gym halls, a limbo space. There's been much attention given to issues of poverty, safety and shelter. But as human beings, we need to do more than survive. We need to do more than eat and sleep. As Aristotle often implored, the good life is a life that includes joy, happiness and well-being. One of the ways we can achieve this is through music. Here, Oliver. I'm King Kong, we are the suggest. How is it the precious? I'm going to do the best side of your day. Let the world rid us out in the chains. Now I'm going to chill us up. Oliver is rapping here with friend Walid. Oliver is 11 years old from Malawi. He has been living in an Irish asylum seeker centre now for the past five years. On the first day I met Oliver, he spoke with a strong West of Ireland accent and wore a Gaelic football jersey. He related to me that each day he runs off the school bus, he runs into the one room he shares with his family and he puts on his headphones. I play it real loud. Without music, I would not be me. I've been studying groups of people engaging with music for over a decade now. And again and again, the same finding is always clear. Across jazz ensembles, choirs, schools, communities, the internet, across race, religion and culture. The same finding is always clear. Music helps people find their place in the world, just as it does for Oliver running off that school bus. Some years ago, I became interested in examining the musical lives of children living in asylum seeker accommodation. In doing so, I wanted to co-create a musical place for those who are displaced. To date, I've worked in centres across Ireland and Germany. In making actual music with the children, I seek to do two things. Firstly, to improve their quality of life, opening up spaces for creativity, agency, belonging and self-expression. But I also, I simply wanted to understand. I wanted to gain understandings about how these children are participating musically within a very unique context. How these children are engaging with music, what role it plays for them in their lives. Because that's the special thing about music. It is an inherent part of everyday life. Wherever there are people, there is music. Let me be clear, however. I do not save the children. I do not solve the problems of asylum-seeking systems. I do not even introduce the children to music. In fact, they introduce me to music. That may not look or sound as you might expect. I'm continually asked if the African children I work with play drums and if the Middle Eastern children play the tambour. Not to mention the look of astonishment when I relate that not all the Muslim girls wear headscarves. The reality is of course much more complex than our assumptions 
would lead us to believe. The children may well play Kurdish music or engage in Congolese drumming, but like most 10 year olds, they're also keen to share with me the latest hit from Rihanna or Justin Bieber. Here, Alice. Alice is first and foremost a singer, known amongst her friends as Minnie Beyonce. As well as giving us frequent renditions of Best Thing I Never Had, she continually talks about entering reality TV talent shows. She's 12 years old, from South Africa. She has been living in a prefabricated asylum seeker centre since she was two. Despite her continuing insecure legal status, she is looking to her future, to be a voice of Ireland. Identities, musical or otherwise, are multifaceted and thus require nuanced understandings. That's where we, as teachers, musicians, researchers and artists come into play. We need to learn from and with each other. We need to enter into conversations. If we want meaningful arts, community and education projects that engage with marginalised communities, we need to listen. We need to hear. We need to co-create. And this is not about searching for the next Bach or even the next Lil' Kim. It's about forming musical communities. It is only when we think in terms of such togetherness that we can begin to imagine artistic ways forward for coexistence, or what sociologist Bauman would call the art of living with difference. Here, Naza and Tamim. A brother and sister from Syria, driven from their homes for being Kurds. They currently live in an army barracks in northern Germany. On speaking with their mother, she related to me memories of her children when they were small. Drawing pictures, going to school, singing songs, playing outdoors. And then nothing but war. She explained, the music stopped. If you have ever sang happy birthday over a cake, danced in your bedroom, or tapped out a rhythm on your knee, you know the value of music in life. Let's ensure the music is only paused and not stopped for these children. Let's ensure we hear all voices in our society. Look to your own communities. Do you sing? Are you part of a local band, ensemble or choir? Open your doors. Make music with all people living around you, whether they live in an asylum seeker centre or not. Because when we do, we will create a much better brighter and united sound than we could ever make on our own. <laughs>